Hello, hello, federal employees. It is so good to spend a little more time with you today. If you are new to this channel, this is where we go over the tips, the tricks, the strategies to get the most out of your federal career, your federal benefits, and then your federal retirement. So today we're going to go over some questions and answers because I figure if one person is asking me a question on whatever platform they are, I figure many, many people have the same questions. So let's dig right into it. So the first question is going to be an easy one. And many of you might already know the answer, but this is the question. It says, Hey, is the high three, the sum or the average of the highest three paying years? So just to do a quick recap of what the high three is, it's important for your pension calculation. That's why it's super, super important. And to calculate it, you actually take the, the 36 months of your career where your average salary over that time was the highest. So to answer this question in a very short, easy way, it's the average. So you find the 36 months that you were paid the most and the average annual salary across that is your high three. For example, let's say June of 2015 to June 2018, your average salary was the highest. Well, you average that for your highest annual salary. So basically, okay, let's say June 2015, like I said, to June 2018. So those three years, okay? If your average annual salary during that time was 100 grand, that's your high three, right? So your average annual salary over 36 consecutive months, that's your high three. Okay, question number two. This was to one of my YouTube videos. It says, what is the 10% bonus for age 62 that you reference? I have not heard this before. If I were to work until age 62, I would have 42 years of service. Okay, so for those that have not heard about the 10% bonus that you get at age 62, this can make a big, big difference in when you decide to retire, especially if you're close, right? If you're close to that 62 mark, this may just push you over the edge and say, hey, I'll do a little more and get a pretty significant bump in your pension. So in a nutshell, if you retire at 62 or later and you have at least 20 years of federal service, and this is for FERS employees, regular FERS employees, okay? So if, like I said, you retire at 62 or later with 20 years or more federal service, your pension calculation for, me, for those that are familiar with it, it is your high three times your years of service times your multiplier, okay? For regular FERS, it's 1%. If you retire at 62 or later with 20 years or more of service, that multiplier goes from 1% to 1.1%. So basically, your entire pension gets bumped by 10% by hitting that mark of age 62 in 20 years. So that can be a big, big difference and can make the difference and decide, hey, when should I retire? So keep that in mind. Question number three. I understand I could wait until I am over 72 to take minimum withdrawals from my TSP and IRA. Would you please inform me on this matter? Okay. What they're asking about is RMDs, required minimum distributions. Basically, at starting at age 72, you are required to start taking money out of your TSP accounts and your traditional IRA accounts. If you have a Roth IRA, RMDs do not count. That's a, that's a huge advantage of a Roth IRA, just to get that out there. Basically what an RMD is, is the government saying, hey, you've had money in these tax deferred, tax advantaged accounts for a while, and you need to start getting money out. That's just how, that's the rules, right? And based on your age and your life expectancy, that'll determine how much. So starting at age 72, it used to be 70 and a half. So there's some confusion there when I talk to people. It used to be 70 and a half, now it's 72. With COVID, with the coronavirus, the rules changed a little bit for this year, so make sure you're up on that. But basically, starting at age 72, there's required minimum distributions where TSP accounts, even the Roth TSP, okay? Traditional TSP and traditional IRA, you start have to start taking money out because that's the rule. That's the law. Okay. Let's see. Next question. Next one. It says, I will be 63 next month 
And after 33 years as a clerk in the post office, I think I'm going to retire. And because they can't take any more, right? Okay, let's see. Let me jump to the question in their question. Okay, what I want to know is if my pension income will affect my early social security status. I cannot live with just one or the other. Okay, so I believe what they're asking is, basically, when you have earned income and you're taking social security before your full retirement age, okay, then your social security benefits will be reduced based on your earn, earned income, okay? So for example, let's say you start social security at 62, but you're still working, okay? You're still working, you're still running a business, something like that. Your social security benefits will be decreased by every dollar you earn over certain limits. And generally, these limits are very, very low, right? So if you're still working and you're taking social security, then your benefits will most likely be reduced some, if not all, down to zero, okay? But what they're asking is, hey, I'm gonna have my pension income and also my social security income. And so, is my pension income gonna decrease my social security income? And the answer is no, it won't. The only type of income that reduces social security benefits if you take it early is earned income. So that's basically if you have a W-2 job, like a job, or if you run a business. Those two types of earned income will decrease your social security if you take social security before your full retirement age. Once you hit full retirement age, these reductions won't matter. You can make as much money as you want, you'll still get your social security benefits. So basically, most cases, you probably don't wanna be taking social security while you're still working, right? That's just probably the case. I don't know your situation, but that's my general advice, okay? Okay, last question, question number five. It says, what I'd like to know about is this. I'm FERS with 30 years, age 57, and I can't take it anymore. I'm probably punching out. Okay, so I won't get the 10% FERS bump at age 62, right? We talked about that. Also, I now learned that I won't get COLAs between the date I retire and age 62. Is that correct? Okay, let's break down this question. So he's 57, so he probably already met his, his minimum retirement age, okay? And he has 30 years of service. So as a FERS employee, if you have 30 years of service and, you're hit, and you hit your minimum retirement age, which is 55 to 57, then you could retire with an immediate retirement. That means you could keep your insurances, you get your pension right away, it's a great thing. But, for those that retire before 62, first, you don't get the 10% bonus that I talked about previously, and also, you do not get COLAs, or cost of living adjustments. Cost of living adjustments are basically where your pension will increase every year with inflation. But if you start it before age 62, then you will not get the colas, okay? You will not get those bumps every year. At starting at 62, you will start getting those bumps, but not until then. If you are a special provisions FERS, the rules are different. The rules are different, so make sure you look into that. So, okay. That is the first half of their question. But, so one of the big things that is a, an advantage of retiring at your minimum retirement age and with 30 years of service is that, you, is that you are eligible for what they call the FERS supplement. Now, many of you know what this is. Basically, if you retire before 62 and you're eligible for an immediate retirement, then you're eligible for the FERS supplement. Basically, it's, it's a percentage of your social security benefits that you would be able to get at 62. The, ca the calculation's kind of nuanced, but um, basically it'll give you a bump, a little more income to fill the gap between when you retire and when you could start taking social security. There's no, there's no, I guess, pressure or need to take social security at 62. Some people retire, let's say at 57, they have their pension, they have their first supplement, and then at 62, the, su the supplement goes away, like it does, and then they don't take Social Security until, let's say, their full retirement age for Social Security. There's lots of different strategies to 
get you through those first 10 years or so of retirement. But that's one big advantage of retiring at 57 and 30 years. But like you said, you don't get colas um, and you don't get that 10% bump that you would at 62. But honestly, finances are a huge part of retirement, but I think the ability to live a life that you want is so, so valuable that, um, yeah, you don't get that 10% bonus, yeah, you don't get those colas, but can you, can you afford to live the retirement that you want with the numbers that you have now? And if yes, hey, do it. Retirement, yes, is about money, but it's about life. The money is there to help you live a life that you love, that you want, and um, if the money does that, then what else can you ask for? That's my opinion, even as a financial planner. Obviously, we'd all love as much money as we possibly can, but is it worth working another five years, right? Uh, that's a question you have to answer yourself, right? But working extra isn't always better if um, you don't like your job, right? It depends, you have to look at your situation. Obviously, you wanna make good financial decisions, but um, the financial decisions should support your personal decision and what kind of life you want to live, right? So those are the five questions for today. If you have any specific questions that you'd like me to answer on one of these types of videos, put them in the comments below and I'll do my very, very best to address them next time. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your holiday season and I will see you next time.